This is Crisis Core Final Fantasy VII Reunion, which is a remaster of the original PSP version and prequel to the original Final Fantasy VII. Now, I never played the original Final Fantasy VII, but I did play the remake. And towards the end of that game, when they showed the guy with black hair holding the Buster Sword, I had no idea who he was. So I researched him, and that led me to this game. And with that character showing up in Rebirth, I knew I had to play this game. I also wanted to platinum this game because I did platinum the remake, and that was enjoyable, so I wanted to give this one a shot. Now beginning the game we play as Zack, a second class soldier who has a dream to be a hero and joining him is his mentor Angeal. Together they're trying to take out these Wutai troopers that are actually been in disguise dressed as Shinra. Now after we get off the train we're going to be fighting these Shinra guys and we're going to get our first trophy for winning our first battle come and get it. Now immediately after this we're going to fight a behemoth and get our next trophy for using our first limb break, prove your honor to me. After we defeat the behemoth we meet Sephiroth for the first time in this game. And he destroys us, but it's just a simulation, and Angeal turns it off, which ends the beginning chapter, and we get our first chapter trophy, Embrace Your Dreams. Now beginning the next chapter, Angeal and Zack are infiltrating a Wutai Fortress. And while we're in here, there's going to be a lot of enemies that we need to go ahead and defeat. There's going to be this counter here in the top left that tells you how many remaining forces are left. Basically, we have to defeat all of them. However, some of them are hidden behind these walls that are scattered throughout the fortress. All you have to do is go up to them and interact with them, and enemies will come out. And as you keep going through this fortress, Angie will call you and tell you that they're also hidden up inside these towers. So all we have to do is go to these towers the same way we did the walls. And after we defeated all the enemies in the fortress, we just continue with the story and have a chat with Yuffie. Then once we get outside, we can talk to Lazard and get the trophy Hero of the Wutai War. After we talk with Lazard, Ifrit will randomly get summoned. We just gotta take him out and then Sephiroth will join up with us and tell us that this Genesis guy has cloned himself and that Angeal, Zack's mentor, decided to go with this guy. That brings us to the end of the chapter, and we get the trophy, he wouldn't betray us. Now moving into chapter 2, we have the option to leave the Shinra building. And we need to because we need to talk to all the different NPCs that are out here. Firstly, we need to talk to these few ladies that are going to give us three different achievements later on, such as the mail and the fan club trophies. We also want to make sure we're looking out for these yellow exclamation marks, because these are NPCs that will give us missions that are all missable in each chapter, such as this Shinra trooper. Now once we kept an eye out for those, we can head back into the Shinra building, into the Materia room, and talk to this scientist here. And what he's going to do is give us a set of missions where we have to collect all these Mako stones and bring them back. Now once we've collected them all, we can just bring them back to him and we'll get the trophy Master Mako Stone Miner. Now continuing with Chapter 2, we head to Benora, Genesis and Angeal's hometown. We make it to the center of Benora, and in this center village, we have to search for five golden glowing things. We just have to go up to them, interact with them, and later in the chapter, we're going to have to come back and collect them. But for now, we can just continue with the story until we get there. It's here in Benora where we meet Genesis for the first time, our main antagonist of this game, and he takes out our friend, but Angeal steps in to save us. Shortly after we escape that area, there's going to be this little mini game when we get outside. You basically have to hit ten rockets in a row, and you'll get the trophy, Slicing Soldier. Directly after that minigame, now's our time to collect all these golden things that we found earlier in the chapter. They give you plenty of time to do this. I messed up there in the beginning, but at the end of this I still had like 12 seconds left. And after you collect all those within the time limit, you get the trophy, Benora Treasures. Now moving on with the rest of the chapter, we see that Angeal kills his mom here, and Zack knocks him out. But Genesis summons Bahamut, and we gotta fight him. After we kill him, we just yoink his materia, and that's the end of the chapter, and we get the trophy, We're Not Monsters. Now beginning the next chapter, we can head into the training room and talk to our nice, wonderful friend Hojo. He's going to give us four little trial things to just take out groups of enemies. And after we complete all four of those, we get the trophy, First Rate Soldier. <laughs> Immediately after this, the game will teach us how to fuse materia. We just fuse our first one, and we get the trophy, Got Materia Fusion Down. After that, we can head to the briefing room and talk to this soldier dude in here who's going to also give us a set of missions that's going to give us another trophy down the line. Now that those three things are done, we can continue with the chapter. After Zack gets promoted to first class, the Shinra building is going to be under attack. We basically have to save five people for this next trophy. You'll save one automatically after exiting the elevator. Then you have to go search for this soldier guy. And right after this, we're going to talk to this couple in the training simulator area. Now that they're all saved, we can continue the chapter until we get outside. Once we get to the bottom, there's going to be a whole bunch of these Genesis copies. We just got to take them out, and then we can head outside where we meet our Turk friend, Cisne. And it's where we can save the rest of the people to get the trophy. 
first few are over here on the right. We just gotta take this sweeper thing out. Then we can talk to him, and then after we talk to him, we can head over to the other side here where there's this dude also getting attacked by a sweeper. Once we save him, he was the last one we had to save, and we get the trophy, everyone's hero. Now the rest of the chapter is pretty long without any trophies, so I'll try my best to summarize it. Right here we save Cisne from this Genesis clone, and after that we head to this reactor where this Angeal copy has been made into a monster. We watch this epic cutscene, run through this maze of a reactor, and discover that Hollander, a Shinra scientist, is responsible for cloning Angeal and Genesis. We chase him around and get juked by him. We fight these three sweepers, and we catch up to Hollander, but Angeal lets him get away. Angeal goes a wing, and Zack doesn't want to fight him, so Angeal just sends him down to the slums below. Brings us to the end of the chapter and we get the trophy, Angel's Dream of One Thing. Now at the beginning of chapter 4, we meet Aerith for the first time. Hello. Together with Aerith, we make our way to the market area. It's here where we get our wallet stolen, and it's here where we have a couple trophies to obtain. First of all, we have to talk to a couple NPCs. This dude, this dude, and this lady. But most importantly, we have to talk to this little girl. This little girl is going to ask you to wait while she's scheming with the boy who stole your wallet. We're going to wait 10 times here. We have to make sure we hit the 10 times in a row. That way we can gain points towards Aerith's trophy later. Now we're going to meet up with the boy who stole our wallet. He's going to say that he stole it because he doesn't have enough money. But we're going to tell him we can buy the medicine for him. But we don't have enough. So we're going to go have to get his wallet anyways. Just fight a few monsters outside the market. We can return back to the market. And it's here where we can claim a whole bunch of different trophies. First off is this trophy right here. We just gotta talk to this guy, he's gonna give us a little mini game to collect all these materia on the ground. We have to collect these in under 15 seconds. We do that and we get the trophy, Godlike. After that we can head over to this lady to start making some perfume for Aerith. It's just another mini game where you have to count how many drips are falling from the thing and stop it at the correct time. We have to do that three times in a row after we make three perfect perfumes. We can give them to Aerith and get the trophy Master Blender. Now for our next trophy we can head over to this little boy who's going to have another mini game for us. For this mini game we just have to pick the correct number of little kids that pass by. Aerith is going to give you a few numbers and the little boy is going to give you a few numbers. They're going to say the same number and that's basically just the number you pick. And after you guess correctly you'll get the trophy Bingo. And after you've done all that, if you've done everything correctly, the little boy will come up to you and tell you that you are a good match for Aerith. Now we just continue with the chapter. We fight this new Genesis clone. We meet up with Angeo and he gives us a ride to Shinra Tower where it's still being attacked by Genesis. Sephiroth is going to tell us that they're targeting Hojo, so we go meet up with him and we have a whole set of new achievements right here. Starting with this one, there's going to be a countdown from 5 to 0 and we have to press the button right at the 0 mark but the counter is going to disappear midway through. This one was actually kind of challenging, but after we get it right, we get the trophy Precise Restoration. Now for this next trophy, we just kind of go in the middle here into this like cell thing. We answer three questions correctly. It's pretty simple and we get the trophy of Significant One. As for the last trophy in this area, we're going to push this button in the center and it's going to release a whole bunch of monsters upstairs. Hojo's then going to give us a challenge so he can get some data from us. So all we have to do is go up to those monsters and steal keys from them. That way we can open up the doors and collect all the treasure chests inside of them. Now this is a time section just like the Benora one. And just like the Benora one, it was super easy to complete this. I had like over a minute to complete this thing. It was super easy. And after we complete that, we got to return to our lovely friend Hojo. Don't use it for evil. And he's going to give us the achievement, Cell Raider. Continuing with the chapter, Genesis shows up and he summons Bahamut Fury. We take him out and that's the end of the chapter and we get the achievement, Where Did Everyone Go? Starting the next chapter, we can talk to this researcher here in the training room. And he's going to give us our next mini game. For this trophy, all we have to do is defeat four opponents. Unlike the Final Fantasy VII Remake, you just have to press one button here, which in theory should be easier, but I found it to be a lot harder to get the timing down. And for most of these opponents, I only win by one or two squats, so this one was kind of challenging, but after, we get the Shinra Squats Champion Trophy. Now for our next trophy, we can head out to the Loveless area and talk to this second class soldier, and he's going to give us a mission to take out Wutai Spies. Now the first one is this dude in the Loveless area. All you got to do is talk to him three times and he'll reveal himself. 
Now we gotta do this five more times for five other people. So the next one here is in the market area where we were with Aerith. Talk to this Shinra dude three times. The next one is this Shinra dude coming out of the elevator. Once again, talk to him and discover him. This fourth one is this lady in the train station area. You kinda have to do all these in order, which is a little bit tedious, but oh well. Fifth one is in this Shinra exhibit area. And the last one is this little kid in the park area where you went with Aerith. After catching all six, you will get the trophy Wutai's Nemesis. Just before we leave that park area, we make sure to talk to this lady to join the Sephiroth fan club. Then we return to the fountain area and talk to this dude, let him go, and he will give us mail for the mail completionist trophy later on. Before we continue with the chapter, we make sure to check the map for all the explanation points to talk to all the NPCs to obtain the missions for all the missions that we need to complete later on. Then we continue with the chapter and we try to go see Aerith, but Tsung stops us and says we are needed in Modeoheim. We then crash in Modeoheim, and lucky for us, the Shinra Trooper here survives because this Shinra Trooper turns out to be Cloud. Zack and Cloud become friends and we make our way to a Genesis factory where we have to infiltrate here without getting seen and collect all the treasure chests within it. And after we do that, we get the trophy Master Infiltrator. After we make our way inside, we have a fight with Genesis we defeat him and he dies. We keep going and we find out that there are more Angeo monsters nearby and that they brutally murdered Cloud. Just kidding, he's okay. I'm okay. We then clash swords with the Angeo and find out that he did not kill his mother, his mother just killed herself. Then, overwhelmed of having the thoughts of becoming a monster, Angeo morphs into some Power Ranger monster thing. We then fight him and defeat him and it leads to this cool scene where Angeo passes on the Buster Sword to Zack. Now we get a time skip, I'm not sure for how long, but that concludes the chapter and we get the trophy, Protect Your Soldier Honor. Now in the next chapter, we are on vacation, but we get attacked by Genesis copies. Sung summons us to Junon because it is attacked by, you guessed it, Genesis copies. And it's here where we get to use the Buster Sword for the first time. It's kind of cool, you can't flinch and stuff, it does more damage, but other than that, nothing much. And during this time, we've held Hollander hostage at Shinra, but he gets away, and we get to fight this new Genesis copy. We take him out, and Hollander summons his tank boss, we defeat it, and we get to our next trophy. So for this trophy, there's going to be a whole bunch of enemies that come through here, and your goal is to not let them cross this line in the back. These waves are going to keep coming until you've defeated 30 enemies total, and after you've done that, you'll get the trophy Immovable Object. Now immediately after that trophy, you're not going to go to the main objective, we're going to turn around and we're going to talk to Sisney up here to join the Zack fan club later. And now we just continue with the story and fight the scorpion thing, which is all for nothing because Hollander gets away again. That wraps up the chapter and we get the trophy, Did Genesis Really Die? Now in the next chapter we're going to get flower wagon parts for Aerith. We bring him back to her and we build our first wagon. And to build the other two sets of wagons for the next trophy, we're going to need to complete missions 2, 1, and 7, 1, all the way through. After we beat those, we come back to her and we get the trophy Midgar Full of Flowers. Now we return back to the Shinra Fountain area and talk to this Genesis fan, help her out with her problems in her fan club. We also talk to the Angeal fan and help her out with her problems, and after that we get the fan club savior trophy. Immediately following that, we can talk to the receptionist here in the Shinra building, and because we talked to Cisne last chapter, we join the Zack fan club here, and we get the fan club aficionado trophy. Now progressing through the chapter, we say goodbye to Aerith one last time before leaving Midgar. Zack and Cloud team up again as they make their way to Nibelheim, and that concludes the chapter when we get the trophy I may abandon Shinra. We make it to Cloud's hometown Nibelheim and meet the one and only after we meet her, we can go talk to this boy who's going to give us a list of the seven wonders of Nibelheim. Throughout the chapters, we're going to have to discover all seven of them to obtain a trophy. The first one is up on this water tower. It's just the red water. It's going to give us a DMW picture for the phoenix. We come back to the boy. He's going to tell us about the second wonder. Now, the next wonder is in the inn next door. It's this picture here that changes from the girl being in it to the girl not being in it. Basically, we have to run back up and down these stairs until we see the old man go back up there. All he's doing is just flipping it because he's got memory loss that can keep something in there. We return back to the boy and he's going to tell us about the third wonder. The third one is in the outskirts. We just got to follow this trail up to the top and we will find these three floating fireball things. 
we just have to defeat them before they blow up and they will drop a gold item and then we just come back to the boy and he will tell us about the fourth wonder now the fourth one is here in shinra manor and this one's kind of a long one we have to go upstairs and go to this safe and it's gonna have a four digit code and each code is tied to a door inside the shinra manor so we walk up to each of these doors and it'll have a keyhole that we have to look through so the first door is going to be books that are not on the shelf so we can see there's four books there and then on the right side of the room we can see there's two books on the ground on the second door we're looking for monsters so we can see one right there in the center and then all the way hiding behind the keyhole on the right is another monster for the third door we're canning apples and juice cans so we can see there's one right there on the dresser and there's also going to be one on the floor here and one more hidden behind this like vase thing now the last one's pretty simple, we just gotta count how many chairs there are, five, so it's pretty simple. We put in the code six books, two monsters, three juices, and five chairs, and we find out it's a cactar inside the safe. We report back to the boy, and he's gonna tell us about the fifth wonder. Now we can't quite get there yet, so we continue the story, and we end up at a reactor. We learn that Genova is Sephiroth's mom, and we also learn that Sephiroth was not created naturally, but rather from a Shinra experiment. We get interrupted by Genesis, who then hurts Cloud, so now we have to help Tifa carry Cloud back to Nibelheim. Now that we're alone with Cloud, we learn that he's embarrassed to be around Tifa because he's not a soldier, he's just a lousy infantryman. And it seems that everything he does for the rest of the game is him trying to prove himself that he can be a soldier. Now that that's cleared up, we can move on to the fifth wonder, and it's down here underneath Shinor Manor. We just gotta kill this little lizard thing, and we get a coffin key that unlocks a coffin in the next room. Now that we've done that, we can go back to the boy and he'll tell us about the sixth wonder, but for now we have to continue with the story. And we learn that Genova is actually an ancient that was found in a 2000 year old rock layer. At this point, Sephiroth goes crazy from reading all the books inside the Shinra Manor. So crazy, in fact, that he burns all of Nibelheim. And this leads us to our sixth wonder. The boy will be waiting outside of a burning building because his mom is trapped inside. We gotta go inside and save her. And once we get inside, it's pretty hard to maneuver in there. But once we get to this window, we gotta go back the same way we came down. After we save her, we discover that this was the sixth wonder. The seventh wonder will come later, so for now, we'll just continue and see that cloud here is heard on the ground, and we'll get this iconic scene of Sephiroth. We chase Sephiroth back to the reactor, and here we see Genova for the first time. Zack decides to attack Sephiroth because he has gone full crazy, and we go into this battle, which is actually a pretty cool battle, but we get smoked. And after a long battle, we unfortunately lose. But out of nowhere, we see Cloud pick up the Buster Sword and stab Sephiroth with it. And then actually out of nowhere, we see Cloud freaking kill Sephiroth. I, when I first saw this, I was like, what the actual heck is happening? But we then get saved by Hojo of all people. And that concludes the chapter and we get the trophy. I'll come visit. Now at the beginning of the next chapter, we find out we've been stuffed inside these Mako pods and Cloud has got severe Mako poisoning. So being the good friend Zack is, he decides to carry him everywhere. And once we get outside, we get a mail from the boy about the seventh wonder. So we head over here to this house and we grab this material and we get the trophy Seven Wonders Expert. Now when we arrive back in Nibelheim, it's not burning anymore. So I think that suggests it's a time skip. And we also learn that Shinra is actually after us. So we retreat back to Shinra Manor and we get a new set of clothes for Cloud. And then we decide to head out at nighttime. So right here is our next trophy. We have to kill all these robots with the sniper. And in the top left, it's gonna tell you how many kill points and how many escaped. Basically, you ha can't let any of them escape. And the kill points let you upgrade your sniper rifle. So you can just farm these running back and forth and grabbing all these kill points. And you can upgrade the attack and the steady aim. But I think the wide target was the best one because you can just zoom all the way out and not even hit them. But now we're gonna kill some robots. After we kill all those robots without letting any escape, we will get the trophy Zack the Sniper. Now we just continue down the path until we get to the beach and see Cisne. And she's not going to rat us out, but she's going to give us a car instead because she's cool. And we're going to take that all the way to... Gungaga! Once we get to Gungaga, we're going to come across Angeal, who we thought was dead. But we're also going to get attacked by Genesis and a few of his copies. And learn that Hollander has taken Genesis copies to stay alive. Now like Genesis... Hollander is also degrading and they need pure S cells and they can't get them from Zack since he was already a soldier so their last option is to get it from Cloud. But before we can continue the story and save Cloud, we have to get another trophy here. So before we leave this area, we have to kill about 10 of these groups of enemies that spawn. 
And after we kill 10 groups, we can head back to this waterfall here. So once we get to this waterfall, we'll notice that there's treasure falling from the top. And this trophy, we have to get all 10 treasures without getting hit by the monsters. And the monsters have a pretty big hitbox. It's pretty annoying if you mess up because you got to redo all those enemies too. Once we get all the 10 treasures, we get the trophy Waterfall Chaser. Now we can go save Cloud and we save him just in the nick of time. And Geo also swoops in to help us out. And we can finally take out Hollander. He goes down rather quickly and he finally bites the dust. We learn that this is not Angeal, but Lazard from the very beginning of the game. And he tells us that Genesis is plotting something in Benora. That concludes a chapter, and we'll get the trophy, We'll All Be Heroes. Now that we know that Genesis is in Benora, we head there, and we find that the whole place is completely changed. We head for the Plume of Light in the distance, and we head underground. Now we head into this cave area, and here we gotta get another trophy. So we start by checking out this first tombstone. There's going to be another one on the left side of the room, just in front of the behemoth. There's going to be another one on the right side of the room, just overlooking this ledge. And the last one's going to be in this little room with the pond. We head into the next area, and there's going to be these five crystals throughout this room. We're going to have to go to each crystal and defeat each enemy there, and that will unlock the trophy, Cage Opener. Now continuing with the story, there's going to be this table in the next area. We have to find seven god materia and insert them so we can open the door. Now that we've found them all, we can slot them in and open the door to the final boss. But before we do that, we need to tackle all of the missions. Now the missions take forever. There's 300 of them. It took me 20 plus hours to beat all these. But there's a trick to make them go quicker and I'll show you guys later. But for now, we're going to start with a DMW. Now the DMW has a couple trophies tied to it. First of all, if you don't know what that is, it's when you earn in a battle and it rolls at the top left. But sometimes some of them are blacked out. So what we have to do is go ahead and collect all of them. Now Sephiroth, Angeo, Tsung, Cloud, Aerith, Cisnite, and Genesis are all obtained through the story, but the rest of the summons are in missions. For most of them, you just have to complete missions, but Cactar, Tomberry, and Magic Pot all have a little trick that you need to do before you can unlock them. Now we can hop into one of these missions, and I want to show you really quick that you can skip most of these missions. So in these open areas here, there's enemies that are going to spawn, but if you run along the edges, you can completely avoid that battle. And you can see here, if you run inside the middle, it's just going to spawn the enemies. So when we do this trick, it's going to save a lot of time because we don't have to fight any enemies. We can just run along the outside. Now we can move on with Cactar in mission 313. We're going to run along the outside and not go to the main enemy. We're just going to run along the outskirts and we will find him over here. We just got to defeat him and that will unlock his missions. Now for the Tomberry, we basically do the same thing in mission 615. We don't go to the main enemy. We just run along the outskirts here and we'll see the Tomberry defeat him. We will also unlock his missions. Now the magic pot is a little bit trickier, we're going to have to have a specific set of materia. We're going to rock Fyra, Jump, Assault Twister, and Gravity. Once we got those, we can jump into mission 10, 2, 3. And here we're going to run around and fight a whole bunch of Tomberries, but what we want to do is find him, because he's just going to spawn randomly. And once he does spawn, we're going to use those materia in order. So we're going to use Jump, Fyra, Assault Twister, and then Gravity. And once we do all that, he's going to join the DMW. Now after we unlock all of the picture frames for the DMW, we will get the trophy Limit Break Collector. Now after we've collected all of those, our next goal is to get all of them to 100%. Now to do this, we have to let the character roll three times in the row in the top left, and then that will unlock a picture or a small little cutscene that will then be added to the DMW progress bar. Now the best way to do this is to go to mission 111 and put on a regeneration ring and just let it run overnight as it is completely RNG which sucks but after we get them all to 100% we will get the trophy DMW Master. Also for completing that we get our first piece of Genji armor which is tied to another trophy where we had to get the full set. The mission 954 has the Genji gloves inside a chest and after you complete that mission you will unlock the shop to get the Genji helmet for 1 million gil. Now the last one is the Genji shield which is a lot harder to get than the other three. What we have to do is find another magic pot and for this one we need guilt toss, costly punch, we're going to have to do 99,999 damage and use octa slash. And once we find him we use guilt toss and then we use costly punch and then we get our next trophy which is to do 99,999 damage. And for doing that, we will get the trophy overpowered. And right after that, we will use the Octa Slash and claim our last piece of Genji equipment, the Genji Shield, and also claim the trophy Genji Equipment. 
now that we've got all the Genji equipment, we can take the hardest boss in the game. Before we do that, we want to make sure that we have all the max stats through Materia Fusion. We also want to make sure we have Costly Punch, Mug, and Kiraga. We want Costly Punch so we can do damage, and we want Kiraga so we can heal. But we want Mug so we can steal Phoenix Downs from her, and she gives you 99 Phoenix Downs so we can just keep rezzing the whole battle. And now that we have our loadout, we can begin fighting Minerva. This whole fight is pretty much just spamming the costly punch on her and just healing when you need to heal. Her attacks are actually pretty easy to dodge, but if you do get hit by these, they take away like half your health bar. I was lucky enough to get her in the corner and just spam the costly punch on her. And once we defeat her, we get the trophy Divine Rule Broken. After we take her out, we clean up the rest of the missions and we obtain 4 trophies for doing so. In addition to completing all those missions, we also obtain mails and certain shops from each of these different missions, and that's going to give us two more trophies. Now that we've completed all those missions and obtained all those trophies, we head to the final boss. But before we do that, we put the game on hard to get the hard trophy, and then we fight Genesis for the last time. Learning from what we did with Minerva, we spam Costly Punch on his mech form and his human form, and once we defeat him, we take him outside where we see Lazard and Angeal in monster form protecting Cloud. Zack receives a letter from Aerith, and he takes Cloud with him back to Midgar. And we pick up the trophies thanks to you, Zack, and Soldier of Legend. In the final scenes of the game, we see Zack set Cloud aside as he heads out to protect him from the Shinra army. He recites his mentor Angeal's teachings to embrace his dreams and become a hero. And that's what he does. He saves Cloud, but at the cost of his own life. And in his dying breaths, he gives Cloud one last message. So there you have it, that was the Platinum for Crisis Core Final Fantasy 7 Reunion, all 51 trophies. It was a fun Platinum to get, but the missions made it a little less fun. Other than that, it was a good game to experience just before Rebirth. I'll give this Platinum experience a 6 out of 10, just due to those missions being so boring and tedious and repetitive. Now I want to thank you guys all for watching to the end of the video, I thank you a lot. If you want to like it, that would mean so much to me. But anyways, thank you, and I'll see you later. Oh yeah!